What? Brainstorming sesh, another one bites the dust. And that's definitely gonna leave a mark. In honor of the second season dropping, today we are breaking down and reacting to all of the intense medical scenes and over the top injuries from Invincible. I am Invincible! Let's dive right in. First of all, who doesn't want to be as jacked as that guy? The only supplement that I end up taking when I work out is creatine and a lot of water and maybe some coffee if I need some energy. To get that big, very hard to do. Oh, sweet. Does that actually happen? No, it typically goes right through you. You might be able to wear a Kevlar vest, metal plates. Most of the time these are resistant to the bullets, but doesn't necessarily stop it. And you're also gonna get the compressive force. It can break ribs or puncture a lung without even going through. I got a lot of money. A lot of money. And we got balls of white stuff, probably cocaine. Could also be fentanyl. As a physician, I do not advise or recommend any illegal substances. Anything that you do ingest should be doctor prescribed, nutrition prescribed, or something that you can get over the counter at a pharmacy or a retail store. Nice, just, just popping through, you know, brick walls, no problem. I see people who the brick wall bounces them back and they'll get concussions, intracranial bleeding, skull fractures. What? What? People will say, hey, you can get hit in the nose and it can go into your brain. If you have a fracture of your face that's so compressive that it compresses in, yes, bones could potentially go into the cavity where your brain is. Does it cause brain injury? Maybe, maybe not. It's always on an individual basis. I wouldn't be fighting this guy. Wouldn't you just run away? Ooh, blood trauma to the face, blood splattering everywhere. That does happen. Half your nose is bone, half of it's cartilage. You can actually crack and break some of the cartilage there, but most of the time when somebody breaks their nose, they're breaking it at the bridge here. Oh. <laughs> Just leave, people, come on. Just leave. Literally shot him right in the deltoid and went right back, shot him in his own forehead. We will see people who get gunshot wounds to the skull and to the head. Doesn't necessarily mean you're going to die instantaneously, but it does mean your chance of mortality is extremely high. Tell Mr. Lou next time I find him on our turf, I won't be so gentle. <laughs> well, he can't tell him. Now he just snapped his neck. Just snapping your neck instantly kill you. No, the movies make it sound that way. But if you cause a spinal cord injury relating to the trauma of your neck, and if it's high enough, yes, it will prevent you from having the ability to breathe. Did you have a good time? Whoa. Oh. What the hell is that? That's what I'm saying. Come on. Uh, run, get out of there. We see people come all the time with ankle injuries. You can walk on an ankle fracture if it's lateral, meaning on the outside. That's if the fibula is fractured, it's a non-weight bearing bone. So you can actually be able to walk on that versus your tibia, which is actually the bone that you feel more medially or on the inside. Oh geez. Whoa. Nice. These superheroes have that like crazy superhero focus. I actually helped develop a product called Level Up. Check it out, lifehappens.com. So he was getting strangled. We get people that come to the ED looking for help, oh, for help about what to do with the pain. Our biggest concern is one airway, is the airway swelling? And the other is, are the major blood vessels in the neck injured? Obviously, ton of damage that the superhero is taking. If this was to a normal human, every bone in that body would probably be broken with all that damage that is going on with the concrete and flying around and getting smashed and getting hit. Uh-oh. I want to see what this guy's face looks like. Oh, okay. We're missing the cartilage of the nose. Your nose! And you can see in that eye, it's all red where it's supposed to be white. And we actually call that a subconjunctival hemorrhage. It looks so scary. It's fine. <laughs> 
Somebody please help me out there in the comments. Help a brother out. Blunt trauma to the abdomen. Might be the chest, but the abdomen's soft, right? The chest has your ribs and your sternum, so it's much harder to cause a puncture wound to that area. Then you worry about, besides your organs, the aorta and your inferior vena cava. It just seems like all that blunt trauma is just pissing him off. You pissed me off. People punch individuals in the face all the time. You're not only gonna break their face, but you're gonna break your own hand. Think about it, you have so many little tiny bones in your hand that you're going against big flat pieces of bone. Oh man, they're trying to eat his face. Oh my gosh. My mouths are very dirty. There's a lot of bacteria in there. And I've had to unfortunately admit people to the hospital who get what we call cellulitis due to human bites. The bacteria just goes rampant. It gets into the tissue and then can get into your bloodstream. There's no spine, but there is the vertebral column or the bones of the spine, but there is no cord going down behind it. So you have the vertebral bodies, but normally the spinal cord would go right behind it in a canal. Move it. Here. Prep Whoa. Over three, six, and eight. I mean, everybody's wearing their PPE. This is pretty good. Clap that thing. I love the stethoscope use. Looking to hear if you have breath sounds or not. You're looking to hear if there's a collapsed lung. This is bad. Oh, we got an open abdomen. Everybody's in their sterile gowns. We see intestines, nice. That's kind of looking real. And on some sort of ventilator oxygen support. This is dropping, people. I'm on it. Oh, geez. Pulse is dropping, meaning not enough oxygenation. Could be decrease in blood volume. Typically, if you don't have decreased blood volume, your heart rate is up, so it's a bad sign that the pulse is dropping. And then obviously you're seeing arterial bleeding just squirting everywhere. And most of the time we don't have uh, viewing rooms at the majority of the hospitals here in the United States. Some teaching hospitals you do, but very rarely. How long was I out? Six days. Whoa. Six days? Sometimes you can be out for many days in a chemically induced coma. Sometimes we'll sedate you. Sometimes you don't need to be sedated, but you're not waking up. And that's in this circumstance. And doctors don't know exactly when somebody might actually wake up. Invincible, this was actually really good. I know that I've done Invincible once before and it was a lot of like battles and fighting, but this one was actually pretty good. We saw a lot of medical injuries, a lot of blunt trauma, a lot of blood, but this stuff actually does happen. Also, big new things on the horizon. Check out my brand new supplement company, Life Happens. This was awesome. If you guys enjoyed this, definitely check out this playlist right here. Make sure that you hit that subscribe button, turn your bell notifications on, and also hit that like button. Thank you so much for watching and stay healthy, my friends.